So I wanted to do a tutorial on the Momentum Lab and I've already loaded the uh, first Momentum video so if we just play this you'll see the uh, actually I'm gonna pause that because that's gonna take a while but we'll run through it with the slider here um, so the first cart comes in the collision occurs and then the first cart remains stationary and the second cart moves off right and that is um, this particular situation. So there's a few things, and uh, in the original tutorial with the uh, golf ball, you've already seen this, um, setting up the video from the start. Now this one, you can go ahead and start from the uh, zero frame from the very beginning. The first cart's already moving and it's in the frame. <coughs> so that's not a problem. And you can leave the ending frames alone. That's that's okay. I've already set this. It's it's hard to see here, but I've already set it for 250 frames per second. Okay, that was the rate at which the video was shot. Now for this particular video, that is really not all that important, right? Um, the frame rate in this video and the calibration in this video, the calibration stick here are really not terribly important for this particular lab because we're not after a particular number the way that we are when we're measuring gravity when we're trying to find 9.8 right I just pushed this cart and we don't even know what its true velocity is okay now we can calculate it if we calibrate things correctly and if we get the uh, frame rate right but there really isn't a quote unquote uh, value that it had to be a priori. All right, so we're really not worried about that. What we're really going to be concerned about in this lab is whatever we get for the velocity of the first cart. When we find that velocity, because the first cart stopped, right after the collision, because the first cart stopped, it has uh, lost all of its momentum after the collision, and the second cart moves off and the second cart should move off with that same momentum so what we're really going to be after is do whatever the velocities I get for these two carts whatever those velocities are how close do the momenta um, before and after the collision how close do the momenta measure up to each other Okay, that's what we're really going to be after. So I've already got the frames set, and I'm going to go ahead and put a calibration stick on here, maybe. We'll see. There we go. New calibration stick. And I'm going to put it here. Well. here and here right and uh, this is approximately 10 centimeters again it's really not that important what this number is um, but for other experiments it will be right uh, it can be so we do want to get in the good habit of making sure that that's right and then we're going to put our axes on here <coughs> And so I, I like to line up the axis with the dot on the first card. We can leave that as our origin. Um, I'm also going to rotate the axes here because uh, if you see, right, this uh, line, this little purple line right here, that specifies the positive x-axis, right? So since the carts are moving to the left, uh, it might be easier to think in terms of a that that direction as being positive. Um, <clears throat> so now that we're here, all right, and our axis is about as parallel as we can make it, and we can verify that and make sure that the white dots stay more or less along the axes. And sure enough, there's not a whole lot of deviation. Since this is a one-dimensional problem, right, it's, it's best to try and align your axes with the direction of motion as closely as possible so you don't have to take into account any uh, vertical direction as well and then do any trigonometry in your Excel measurements, right? Um, so then what we want to do is come up here to create 
and I'm just going to create point mass and the mass A is going to come up and then I'm just going to measure these through and I'm going to hit the shift button I'll be ready to click on the white dot and man I should probably should have uh, done every like seventh or eighth frame that one was not a very good data point uh, may have to throw that one out do be do be careful right and when you're going through and analyzing your data right if you see a point that just doesn't look right if you see a point that just doesn't look right it's okay to either go back and redo the experiment or throw that data point out right uh, we just want to be as consistent as possible as we do this right so here we go and you'll notice right in the upper right hand corner up here this is indeed turning out to be more or less a straight line so I actually don't know if I'll have to worry about throwing out that data point but we'll see um, but it should be linear right it should be linear I don't think that last one was a terribly good data point either and now you'll actually start to see the data points start to level off as the magnets between the cards start to interact on each other and push right um, and so let's see here you really don't need to take this out much more than this okay and in fact um, you'll notice up here that this has in fact started to level off so when you import this into Excel make sure you only uh, take the straightest part here the, the maybe 15 data points or so that are they're straight and all you need is the slope of that line <coughs> and um, you can even get that if you click on this graph right double click on the graph um, then this tool comes up and you can actually hit the analyze button hit the curve fit button and it defaults to a linear line you can try to fit it with uh, uh, several different things here um, but the slope <coughs> is 5.4 with the linear line there <coughs> apologies <coughs> I've got some phlegm in my throat but uh, in any case right um, when you import this into Excel uh, and I highly encourage you to do that unless you didn't even take these last few data points and, and your data is more or less straight then you can go ahead and use the analyze tool but if you need to crop some uh, data points to try and make sure you're getting the best uh, value then that is uh, what I recommend okay so now that we've done that okay now that we've done that we want to come back up here and create a second point mass right and so now we're gonna track mass B so now what I can do is just start tracking the second mass and now I'm gonna have two sets of data right now I'm gonna have two sets of data and notice the the graph has already changed to mass B and the data in the chart is updating as I'm clicking right And I mean, I won't. I won't take this out terribly far. I'll just do it for time's sake. Okay. I mean, that's that's really more than plenty to get a uh, decent slope here. All right. So now, <coughs> if you come back over here and let's go back to analyze and curve fits and you'll note that here I have the slope so 5.24 and your units okay are gonna be in um, let's see yeah 
So this is going to be 0.1 meters. So this is already interpreting this as 0.1 meters. So these are going to be in centimeters. Okay, so your positions are going to be in centimeters. So um, your speeds are going to be in centimeters per second. Okay, your speeds are going to be in centimeters per second. Uh, no, no, I apologize. The it's it's giving in meters and. Uh, um, so, since it's giving in meters, um, that actually is uh, 5.2 meters per second. I apologize. Okay. Uh, but in any case, again, the point is to look at the slope and use that slope as the velocity that goes into the definition of momentum. So let's come back up over here to mass A, right? And again, even though those data points in there, they're not really affecting much. Here we have 5.4, and here we have 5.2, right, 5.24. So when you take the mass of the carts, which are essentially equal at about a quarter of a kilogram, 0.25 kilograms, and multiply that by the velocity here for each cart, uh, this is cart B, this being uh, cart A, um, then, oops, then what we want to do is compare those two uh, sets of data, right? Oh, yeah, I can, I can flip, I can toggle up here between A and B. Um, <clears throat> and so, how close are those two values? Now, 5.24 and 5.4 are really not that far off. Okay, they're really not that far off. And the sigmas in the tables uh, in, in your lab write-up are the uncertainties on those, and you actually do need to run Excel to do those. And you can either get those from a linest function or you can get them from um, the linear regression tool in the data analysis tool pack. Um, one more thing to note, the, uh, the videos have different scenarios, right? The videos have different scenarios and in a couple of them, both carts are going to move after the collision. And I believe, if I remember correctly, in one case, the initial cart bounces backward. So you actually need to track the cart before the collision, and then after the collision, take the linear portion before the collision as the initial speed of the first cart, and then take the backward motion as a negative velocity, um, in the backward direction and factor that into your conservation of momentum equation. So you'll get an initial momentum from the first cart, and then the two carts are going to bounce, the second cart's going to move this way, the first cart's going to move backward, and it's the sum of that total momentum, the first or the second cart moving along the positive x-axis, and the first cart bouncing backward along the negative x-axis. <coughs> Those momentum uh, added up together should equal the initial momenta of the first cart. Okay, so hopefully you have found the this helpful. Um, if you have any further questions as you're moving along, please feel free to let me know, and we will uh, see you guys. Well, we're not going to see you guys, um, but we will be communicating with you guys via email and via Blackboard. If you have any questions, get a hold of us, and I hope everybody's staying safe. All right, we'll talk to you next time.